Hello everyone, this is a storybook about the book titled Just Do This, The Pursuit of a Happy Human by Raf Souza. Chapter 5, The Worst Bass Training Ever. The following morning, Josh took a boat with a lot of other guys just like him and after hours went to a jungle. He kept me all the time in a bag in order not to show me to anyone. I learned that I couldn't make any kind of noise, but I was bored. So, I used to leave Josh's bag to play with so many things in the jungle. But Josh's training caught my attention. It was so hard and intriguing. The first day was such a very nice day. Everybody played, ate, drank, and had a lot of fun. But it was a trick. The reality was that they were going to go through hell. The second day... The instructors told the candidates that they would go through the worst day of their lives. They screamed things to make them quit. You never make it! Or, give up now and go home to your warm bed. Or even, you don't belong here, just quit! Josh and the others were woken up by the instructor throwing buckets of cold water on their bodies. He said in and out loud an angry voice, Get up! You bunch of garbage, we'll make you real man today. You got two minutes to get ready, losers. If you can't do it, you'll spend some time in the cold lake. The instructor was very meticulous. He could find a mistake in every single person he inspected. Josh, for example, forgot to lace his boots the right way and went to the water because of this. They spent some time in the cold water with their uniform combat boots and heavy backpack on. They also had to carry their heavy rifles, but it couldn't get wet. Yeah, rifle. After all, that's how I heard humans calling this cat-killing weapon. So, they had to keep their arms lifted in order not to let it touch the lake. After a while, their shoulders were in pain. The instructor didn't care much about it. He left them in the water for quite a long time. When they left, they were not allowed to change their clothes. In order to get dry, the instructor made them run for some kilometers in wet clothes, carrying a heavy backpack rifle in hand. The gun was called Your Baby by the instructor, the intention being that they were treated like their firstborn child. They ran 19 kilometers. I was so curious that I followed them. I was tired too. Josh seemed totally bushed. The instructor asked them to stop and said, Lunch time! At that stage, everybody was starving and dying to eat. They felt they could eat anything. That was an interesting thing I saw. Josh was a picky eater. However, he was so hungry, he'd have eaten a baseball glove if it was on the menu. To make their lives more complicated, the instructor said they needed to earn the right to eat. They first had to complete a 39-meter path of sharp stones crawling, only wearing underwear. Only the ones who made it could eat. Josh, a tough guy, managed it and ate. For those who completed the task, the instructor came with a big bucket with an indiscernible sludge inside. It looked like they picked it from the garbage. It was so smelly. He spread the food on the ground. No plates or silverware. Just use your hands, maggot, he barked before adding. This will be your only meal of the day. Bon appétit. Josh refused to eat at first, but when the instructor said that would be his only meal of the day, he had to reconsider. His face was green. He felt like vomiting, but he knew that if he did, the instructor would make everybody eat his vomit. Josh controlled himself, imagined a delicious meat, and ate the ground food. He learned a very important lesson at that moment. Hunger is the best seasoning for food. They kept repeating this cycle all day long. Time in the cold lake, running for a long time, and crawling on sharp stones. Half of the recruits gave up on the first day. Josh was still standing. At night... Only half of the group could sleep. The others had to stay awake because of dangerous animals lurking in the jungle. That was the instruction. However, 
They were all exhausted, so all of them fell asleep. The following day, the instructor was another person. He didn't want to be called instructor. He was Mr. Hevo. Josh thought the previous instructor was a tough guy, but that's because he hadn't met Mr. Hevo. But he was about to. The difference started with the wake-up call. The instructor used buckets of cold water, but Mr. Hevo used pure violence. He and his guys woke everybody up with kicks and punches in order to simulate an attack. The recruits were pretty scared and hurt. They started the day learning the important lesson of the necessity of looking after each other. After the scary attack, Mr. Hevo brought a helicopter with a rope attached to it. The recruits had to tie themselves around the rope and fly for 15 minutes swinging around the lake. If they fell, they would be dismissed of the course. It was an unforgettable experience for him, hanging on a rope, holding his baby with fear of falling into the lake. Josh was afraid of height, but was able to hold tight the whole tour. However, he dropped his rifle into the lake. Mr. Hevo had all the recruits spend the whole day diving looking for Josh's baby in the lake. It took all day. As punishment for that, all of them lost their right to sleep. However, while they were in the lake, Mr. Hevo's assistant took the recruits' backpack and spread them out all over the jungle. The following day, everybody was wet, exhausted, and very sleepy. Some of them quit the program. At that point, there was only one-fourth left of the recruits who started the training. Josh kept going. Where are your backpacks? asked Mr. Hevo with an angry voice. They were all caught by surprise because they hadn't noticed they'd gone missing. Yet, Mr. Hevo said, A little bird told me that your backpacks are spread around the jungle. You must get them. Only the ones who bring their backpacks back will be allowed to eat. Of course, it was too easy to go through the jungle and look for backpacks. Mr. Hivo and his assistant created a war environment with a lot of smoke, gunfire, bombs, yelling, and so on. Although this seemed a terrible thing, they learned the very important lesson of working as a team. At first, they all looked for their own backpacks. They were selfish. Then, they realized if they were together rescuing one after the other, they would have better chances to succeed. That's what they did, and they succeeded. They were proud of completing the task and getting the right to eat. Yeah, we did it, boys! Now let's eat! said Josh to the others. Yeah, hoop hooya! yelled the others happily with a war cheer. I'm so hungry right now. Bring my steak, Mr. Hevel, said another recruit with a large smile. But of course, they celebrated too early. Mr. Hevel came carrying a cage with snakes and chickens alive inside. I'm a man of my word. Now that you rescued your backpacks, you have the right to eat. Enjoy your meal, he said. Right after saying this, he opened the cage and let the animals escape. The recruits stood watching, waiting for some sort of direction. Mr. Hevel looked at them and said, Don't you want to eat? Yeah, where's the bucket? asked the recruit. Bucket? This is the jungle. Hunt your own food. Be fast because they are running away, said Mr. Hevel. Are we supposed to hunt snakes and chickens? asked another recruit. Yes. Then you kill them and eat them, explained Mr. Hevel, as if it was the most common thing to do on earth. While they were looking at each other, trying to figure out what was going on, Josh said, Come on guys, we can do this. Although some of them quit that moment, there were still nine recruits remaining and Josh was there. They hunted the animals, killed and ate them. The worst taste in the world and at the same time, the most delicious. Horrible flavor with a taste of victory. The feeling was like, I did something I never thought I would do. I overcame my fears and I felt free. I just did it. 
The days were going on and the training was getting harder. Among the hard tasks they had to crawl through wires on fire, have fist fight in the middle of the night with Mr. Hilva's assistant, remain the head under the lake for a couple of minutes, hunt animals, learn how to think strategies and shoot, even being exhausted and stay awake having the right to sleep 9 minutes per day. Mr. Hevel used to say that they could sleep the number of minutes of remaining recruits a day. The night before the last day was the meanest. It wasn't because of the task, but because the recruits were so tired, hungry, cold, and couldn't wait to complete a training. Mr. Hevel put all of them to spend the cold night in the mud. They had to stay 12 hours there awake, and the ones who survived would complete the training. The first two hours were hard, but when the clock reached six hours in the mud, their bodies felt like they were going to disintegrate. That was the moment Mr. Hevo took advantage of the situation and said, If only two of you give up now, I will conclude the training. You won't need to go through the six hours left. If two of you give up now, you all can have a nice shower, clean clothes, warm bed, and good food like this delicious steak I'm eating right now. That was a very big temptation. They looked at each other to see who was going to give up. They wanted so badly to hear those two recruits giving up in order to complete a training. That was the moment Josh filled his chest with air and said out loud, Nobody will quit! We can do this! Mr. Hivu's assistant encouraged them to give up all the time, saying that there was a warm bed and good food waiting for them. They even rubbed their juicy steaks in their faces. Right after saying this, Josh started singing a song. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. It was a song terribly out of tune. But then another voice raised and sang together. Then another and another and another. I didn't understand the lyric, but I loved it. Suddenly, they were all singing together. Mr. Hevel threatened them with more time in the mud if the song persisted. But they all kept singing. They felt warmer. They felt connected. They could feel and care about each other. Mr. Hevel did what he said, and instead of 12 hours, they spent 14 hours in the mud. But nobody gave up, and they all passed the training. Those nine recruits got a lot more than the jungle training diploma. They learned to see the value in the small things. They learned how to look after each other. Even though those days sounded like a nightmare for Josh, It was a huge lesson in life. After that, the food tasted better. The nights of sleep were great. He learned how to see greatness and be thankful for the simplest things in the world. He also learned a big sense of teamwork and how much you need others. He wasn't selfish anymore. He learned how to serve the others. I was happy because I found a happy human, but this didn't last very long. On the day of the ceremony, Josh got his diploma and Jacqueline was there. I knew she always hated me and still was very mad about the cell phone thing. I decided to leave Josh when I saw him walking towards her with a small black box. He kneeled before her, opened the box, showed her the ring and said, Jackie, will you marry me? Yes, she said very emotional. Jackie used to talk about getting married with Josh quite often. I remember her saying to him, When we get married, we'll go to bed and wake up together every day. We'll be together forever and ever, babe. When humans put this shiny object on each other's fingers, it means that they are going to be together every day. I knew from that moment on, my life would be a complete disaster. Jackie never liked me, and the day she took control of the house, my life would become harder than the jungle training. I didn't want to leave him, 
but I knew that my presence there would provoke more conflicts and fights than ever between them. Even being a cat, I could foresee that coming. Josh was a very nice guy and a good friend. He got more mature than ever after the jungle training. Although I wanted a happy human, Josh wasn't ready to have a pet. He needed to learn how to be a good husband first for Jackie. I couldn't be between them. I had to make a tough decision and, even being painful, I simply knew that I had to. That was the moment I left him. Even though it made me sad to say goodbye, I followed my mom's advice and just did it. Bye, Josh.